treasurers, Danielle here again. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial, which is all on the chart of accounts. Uh, the chart of accounts is where you will find every single account line in your bookkeeping. Uh, you will find that you will go in there a lot. I would probably go into the chart of accounts just as much as I would spend on the home screen going from account to account or icon to icon of what I'm using. So we will jump straight in to the chart of accounts. So click and we're open. All right, as you can see, you've got your bank accounts, your assets, accounts payable, receivable, uh, fixed assets. Um, you may choose to show fixed assets, you may not, that's up to uh, up to your parish, uh, your GST refunds, um, your opening balances, then we will get into the income, every single income line, your offer tree, your fundraising, your donations, your bank interest, diocesan interest, um, missions, everything, every bit of income, any bit of money that comes into your church, every single expense line. So all of your admin, all of your outreach, your bishop and council, your rector's expenses, all of your repairs and maintenance, utilities, again, down to your missions and some miscellaneous and sundry. You can choose to use the numbering system or you can choose not to use it. I choose to use it because it puts everything in order. It makes my reports just neat and tidy. I have, I use the number nine as the prefix for all of my expenses, eight for my income, going up through um, six for my GST, four for my accounts receivable, three for payable, two for all of my ADF and trust accounts, and number one for my bank accounts. If you don't choose to use the numbering system, it will still sort them out in type. But when you get to your income and your expenses, all of these will just be in alphabetical order. So they can be a bit higgledy piggledy if you're not using uh, subheadings and and sub accounts, um, especially down in expenses. If you want to see all of your rector expenses together, you would have stipends nearly at the bottom. You'd have long service leave halfway through. Uh, your bishop in council, you'd have assessment at the top, and then you'd have insurance halfway down. Um, your utilities would be all over the shop. So I just like to use um, the numbering because I think it's neat and tidy. And it also helps in parish council, especially at the moment as we're having our meetings over Zoom. Uh, somebody may ask a question about, you know, line number 97010. Um, and then we're all on the same page. We're not all looking around going, oh, where's electricity, where's electricity, up and down my report till, you know, someone's going, I can't find it. All right, so that's why I choose to use the numbering. You can use it. You don't have to use it. I am going to show you how to enter a brand new line. Now, I need to enter a bank account because we did recently just open one. This is how you're going to enter anything, whether it be a bank account, an income line, or an expense line. So I have just clicked on this account button at the bottom here, account, and I'm going to say new. Now, because I do use the numbering system, I'm just looking at my number here, and I will use 1-1100. Okay, first one, it's going to ask me what I would like to create, and I'm creating a bank account. I will pop my number in. Okay, the account name. We've just created a new debit card account for our uh, rector to use so that she doesn't have to 
use her own funds all the time and then be reimbursed through petty cash or you know putting in her receipts to me for her to pay them we just thought it would be easier if she's using uh, a parish debit card so I have chosen that it's a bank I've given it a number I've given it a name it's not a sub account of anything but I will go through and create uh, an income with a sub account so I'll show you that now I don't need to enter an opening balance because I'm I've transferred money from our everyday account to this account which you can see in another tutorial called transferring funds um, so that's all I need to do on this on this save and close now back to my chart and I can see that this new bank account is here let's say I need to create a new offer tree called Wednesday services because we have a service on Wednesday so I'm going to choose income I didn't look at the number so that was a bit silly so what I will do Wednesday church and that's going to be a sub account of offer tree so I can get a number from here so I'll use 81040 so I'm going to choose offer trees 81040 all right now the tax code for offer trees is free because they don't incur GST and I can save and close so I now have Wednesday church services under my offer trees now I don't actually want that so I've created it don't actually want it I'm going to right click on the black line and I'm not going to make that account inactive I'm not actually deleting it because I may need it one day I'm just going to make it inactive uh, I saw another one in here earlier that we don't actually use at all prepayments now I'm pretty positive we don't use it I'm just going to double click on there all right, it hasn't been used since last year. So I don't use it anymore since I took over as treasurer. So I'm just going to make that inactive. So then I don't need to see it when I'm printing off my profit and loss. Now, there was something else I saw that the spelling was completely wrong. So we'll fix that up so again one click right click of my mouse and I will edit the account and I will take away a few of these H's out of church and I'll save and close now with the account that I made inactive and I decided next week oh I've actually got a prepayment I actually really need to make that active again click on account show all of the inactive accounts find that inactive account where was it all the way up here do 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 prepayments and I'll just right click on that and I'll actually make it active because well, maybe I will need it. All right, so I didn't actually delete it. I just made it inactive. So anything here with all of these little crosses down them, especially the payroll, because we don't do payroll within our parish. Um, so anything with crosses, a lot of these ones with crosses, they are automatic accounts that QuickBooks just give you when you set up your account. I didn't actually need any. I've got Wednesday Church here inactive so now I will hide the inactive accounts and I'm back to just all of the accounts that I would like to see now chart of accounts is also very good for clicking on an item whether it be an income or an expense to have a look at transactions that have gone through here so I'm going to jump into postage expense.
Okay, someone has asked, how much are we spending on postage? Is it worthwhile opening a an Australia Post account or do we just use our petty cash? So rather than flicking through petty cash receipts as far back as, you know, as we've got them, um, I can just double click onto postage and this is going to bring up all of the transactions that have been allocated to postage over the time. Now, the date range, QuickBooks has already decided that it's going to show me this financial year to date, but I actually want to look at further back than that. I want to look at all the dates. So I will just click on there and drag it up and let's have a look at all the dates. So I can actually go back to uh, parish council or whoever asked me and say, look, from, when did we start? So from 2017 to, you know, to 2020, we've only spent $700 on postage. I don't think it's worthwhile opening an Australia Post account. And then someone might say, oh, but this year we've actually posted quite a bit, you know, what about just this year? So then I can just have a look at this financial year to date. I'm going to say, $200, no, I don't really think it's worth it. So I can open any account and look at a, a group of transactions. I can either choose to enter a date range. So if I wanted to look at something specific from, you know, March 2018 to July 2018, I can enter a date range here or I could use the drop down screen and choose my dates. If the parish council wanted uh, to know how much money had come in for missions this year, I can double click on missions income and that's gonna give me every sub account under there, under that heading. I could either choose to print it I click print I can choose to print it or what I would do is email that to myself I can email it as an Excel or I can email that as a PDF that will go directly to my emails and then I've got it ready for parish council or I could then forward that to uh, to the parish councillors uh, what else that is all I have on my list. I think I've covered pretty much everything. Oh, if if you weren't sure if something went into your bank account or not, oh, did I pay that account out of out of the everyday account or did I pay it out of the debit card? I, I might have made a mistake there. You could click on the debit card account and say, oh, no, it's all right, it's not there. Um, but did I actually pay it out of the check account? I'll double click on there. Oh, yeah, I did pay the lawn mowing person out of the bank account. That's fine. All right, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, so you will find that you will jump in here quite a lot. You will open an account to, yeah, just find out whatever information it is that you're needing. Um, it doesn't hurt to have a tidy up every now and then when you do your annual budget you may decide that you need some extra income lines you might decide to take some out so again messy church we've decided we don't have anybody to run messy church so again have it black one click for black you can right click and make it inactive or you could come down to the accounts pop up and choose to make it inactive that way as well you could even edit the account and tick a little box to make it inactive. So there's several ways to make things inactive. Um, so yeah, have a tidy up every now and then, especially when you're doing your budgets, quite helpful. You might like to add some more, you might like to take some out. So that is your chart of accounts. Very, very useful for quick lookups. And when you do actually double click on something, it's actually called a fast report because that's what it is. It's a fast report. Report at your fingertips there very quickly. Pop in your date range, email it, print it, done. That's your 
chart of accounts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.